Well, good morning to you, Mike, and thank you so much for joining the author's table this morning. Yes, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, absolutely. You look good. You as well. Thank you. You've been doing okay? Life has been treating you well? Yeah, things have been pretty good. We got through, uh, Debbie kind of blew through this week, and uh, we didn't get too much rain here, but I know the people along the coast had it pretty hard, and uh, just uh, glad to we didn't get to get it too bad so yeah, life's pretty good right now that's good that's awesome that's great to hear okay mike in, in two words first word describe yourself before you're an author and then one word after becoming an author wow um before i was an author i was i would say uh a wannabe i, okay. I wanted to, to get my story out uh afterwards uh it's more, I still want to prove, um, uh, I've got more stories I want to tell, I guess, as I become a storyteller. So sure, absolutely. Very good. Now I know Mike, uh, growing up, uh, you had some obstacles and some challenges, mm -hmm. uh, and you felt like a lot of people do. Yes. You know, and what was your purpose in life? And that's what you were feeling. Uh, so describe your turning point, which you wanted to write a book and then share your journey with others. Well, um, I guess it really didn't hit me until I was much later in life. Um, you know, I went through all the, all the struggles and overcame the struggles and just felt really good about the way life was going. And then all of a sudden life kind of changed. Um, I became, uh, um, a dad and, um, as I was going through life, uh, changed jobs and then just didn't find my purpose again. And I was trying to get back to that. And then my father had passed away. Uh, he was in the process of writing a book about his life. He was, had a real interesting life working for the government as a, in the CIA. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it just kind of hit me that, everybody has a story to write That's and right. it just hit me that I needed to get, you know, I had a story that I could tell that might be able to help people. And I, I really felt the calling, um, to get that story out and then decided to sit down and finally write it. It was probably about six years ago now. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Cause I remember when we met and that was last year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, now, when you were re ready to sit down, Mike, and write your book, which is very motivational, uh, you know, it, it was it's a look into oneself. So was writing your book difficult or did you find it easy to put together? Well, it was a little bit of both, actually. Um, when I first started out, it was more like I needed to write down all of the the little side stories and how to, how to piece everything together. And then I finally got a little bit more book smarts to me, I guess. <laughs> and then I wrote out an outline to try to make sure everything came together properly and in the right order and everything. And some of the stories that I relived through writing that actually turned out to be a lot more powerful mm -hmm. and, there was a couple of times where I just had to set the book aside and, you know, go a couple of weeks without doing anything because I was trying to process all of that. And then, um, you know, once things started rolling, uh, started getting better organized and got the, the stories in the right order and got uh, together with a great editor that really helped me as well. Um, uh, the, um, the, everything just kind of came together and felt really good about uh, being able to tell the story. That's good. Now, what, did you, like, uh, do you, when you write, do you consistently just write because it, it's flowing or do you sort of stop and go and edit it or, you know, fine tune it as you go? It was, it was a lot of stop and go because I didn't know the real process of what you should do as a writer you know, just being a, a regular person, you know, just trying to, to gut my way through it all. Sure, sure. 
and trying to use my, you know, sports background and trying to know, you know, you've got to really just kind of get through things. And sometimes you just got to get it all out there and then organize it. Um, I did, did a lot of that at the time I was actually working a third shift job Mm. and it was kind of a, a mind numbing job to the point where I could think about these things. Um, and then when I got home, I'd write a bunch of pages down and then went to bed so that I could get up for the shift again. So that was, that was kind of a, a neat little, um, bonus, I guess, to yeah. the job. So yeah, you get just, a little bit of time to think through it. That's right. And then really, uh, really feel what I was writing. You sort of take advantage of the opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Now, okay. Your book is called when perfection isn't perfect. Yes. Now it's an inspirational read. And for those who feel lost alone, uh, no direction or purpose in life. So, so, so now that your book is in hand, so what, what has been the outcome for uh, helping others? Uh, the thing that really surprised me the most was a lot of, a lot of people that I knew and even some people that I didn't know came back to me after they read it and said, I was going through the exact same thing. Mm. I had the same issues. So it's like there was a collective group of people that we were all going through the same emotions and the same issues mm -hmm. yet we never connected and nobody ever knew about it. And then I guess that's a lot about what, what happens through society. That's you know, right. that people feel depression, they feel feel sad about things they feel like they're just a speck of sand in the world and they just really don't know that they are part of a a, a bigger purpose in life that's right god has a purpose for their life and just being able to find those things and find out that there were common uh common things among friends and people that i didn't know that it inspired them to come out with their story and talk about it a little more too. Yeah, sure. So they could help help themselves and help others. Now, now, um, now, with your book, now, would you like to talk in little detail about your book and and how uh, sure. you came about? And yeah, um, like I said, my my dad uh, was trying to write his story. Uh, my kids constantly told me that. Uh, you know, you were just born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You always had it, everything handed to you. And um, it was kind of a, a an answer to that for them mm -hmm. that, you know, I really, I, I went through problems and struggles just like they were going through. And I wanted them to know that there there is a way to get out of some of the struggles that you're doing yeah. and finding your purpose in life, finding what God has has in store for you and then finally giving over to that and not trying to do everything yourself, but to, you know, rely on help from other people, uh, rely on your faith, your family, your friends, and together when all of that works together, amazing things can happen. I That's mean, you know, I started out with anxieties and issues and I ended up being a, um, a place kicker in football. And uh, I uh, went to Adrian College. I was uh, my freshman year. I was the, on the only person on the team not to play a single play on the varsity that year, which was kind of sad and yeah. kind of uh, it just kind of built me up to understand that, hey, there's, you know, I've been put in this position. I have to you know, understand what my real purpose is on the team. Right. And then when I finally, finally caught on and finally started doing what, uh, what I was supposed to be doing, everything started clicking together. You know, the right people came together. I had a, a fantastic teammates. My coach had faith in me sophomore year. Uh, we had a guy come in from Northern California who was all Northern California best kicker in the state of California. And I ended up winning out and becoming the first team kicker that year. 
And the very first game we ended up winning nine to seven, I kicked three field goals. Wow. That's awesome. And, and you know, I got all the, uh, accolades and, uh, you know, people, newspaper guy interviewed me as I was coming off the field. <laughs> and then, uh, my parents told me that uh, a friend of mine was, uh, sick and in the hospital and it was kind of a, a welcome back to reality moment and you know we were so excited we won that first game the whole ride back uh, to school it was um, you know everybody was all excited and I kind of sat there in the bus and refocused on what really matters in life is that you know mm -hmm. other people and serving other people is really how to stay humble. And it really humbled me. And, you know, I kind of prayed all the way back home for this person. And um, that became part of my routine and trying to find routines to keep myself humble and not let things go to my head uh, kind of was the, the, the start of how everything started coming together. And, um, and then each game kept getting better and better. I had more opportunities to kick. I ended up uh, leading the nation in division three football that year. I was number one place kicker that year. Also became an all American. And I was also part of the team that uh, we made our first national playoff um, for the college. That was a big boost. And it was, it was amazing. We ended up uh, losing that game by one point to the eventual national champs. I made all three of my extra points. Their kicker missed his first extra point. And they went for two point conversions afterwards. <laughs> it was uh, but, kind of a mixed blessing there. Sure. You know, but I think too, in the very beginning too, Mike, you, you had a, a, a good support structure. Absolutely. To help yeah, build the, your confidence. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I always believe too, there's a reason for everything. Absolutely. You, you know, even if it was a negative, it's, it still could be a positive. Yeah. And that's what I tried to, tried to find. Uh, one of the things that I went through is trying to find one good thing every day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of when everything turned around in my life, when I started finding those one good things. And then I kept finding one and then I wanted to find another. And then pretty soon everything was really clicking together. The right people crossed my path. Mm -hmm. Um, the right people came into my life. Um, you know, the guys on the team, you know, I had a, the same long snapper, um, basically a couple of different holders, but everything worked together. The guys blocking for me, you know, it wasn't just about me. Right. And that's the big thing that I always wanted to find out that, um, or wanted to let other people know that's, you know, my name's in the record book, but it's because of all the people around me, my family, my faith, mm -hmm. my friends, my teammates, the coaches, you know, and that's kind of a, the way to get through life that's is right. to is to have that group around you. You know, being a kind of a hermit is not really the best way to go. You know, really do need people. We're all we're all on this earth to to help each other out. That's right. Absolutely. Well said. You know, it, and, uh, you know, team building is it can be from work, could be from home. It could be just the right people you just hang around with. You know, exactly. You know, if, if everybody's positive, you'd be surprised what people can do, you know. Ex exactly. When you've, you, what I always say is you'll, you'll find what you look for. If you're always looking for the negative, you're looking for excuses, you'll find them. That's and right. when you start looking for good things and start looking for the positives, you'll find those as well. So yeah. and I've you've got a choice. Yep. I've always said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. Exactly. That's yeah, I've perfectly. always said that. I, yeah. And, and it's, and it's, you know, if, if you're right with the right people, I mean, you'd be surprised where it can take you in life. You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. from being a, a very uh, shy person and all of a sudden, you know, I was lifted to, um, you know, the high status in football field and ended up becoming the only place kicker in division three history to make all my extra points, which is yeah. that I still hold today almost 40 years ago. Wow. That's awesome. 
that's, so that's, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I said, it was a lot of my teammates and, you know, all of us working together. It wasn't just me, even though, you know, yeah. my leg hung, but I had to have somebody hold it. I had to somebody snap it and I had to have guys blocking for me. And, you know, you know, that one, that one time that was your, like your building block that, that, that built your, the rest of your story, you know, your history. Oh, exactly. Yes. You know? And that, that was just that, this, that one time was your, was like your opening door for success, you know? Exactly. That, that's wonderful. Yes. Now, when you completed your book, Mike, um, now, it, was it a self-cleansing uh, feeling? It really was. Uh, surprised me uh, how how I felt, yeah. uh, especially about the, the negative parts of the book and reliving that. And then seeing how everything, you know, it's kind of like uh, looking at a roadmap after you've taken your trip. It's like, oh, this is the way we went. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't the route I would have taken if, if I was smart, I would have just taken the straight route here. But all the twists and turns and people that I met and experiences that I had, And I looked back on it and I couldn't have planned it any differently if I was writing a Hollywood movie or, you know, that it was, uh, it was just an amazing thing to look back on and be, be proud of and be, be happy that, you know, I was chosen to live this life, you know, and there's, like you said, there's a reason for everything. Yes. It was meant to be for you to experience that, to get to where you are today. Yeah. And comes down to making the right choices you know i could have i could have changed schools my freshman year since i didn't play any i could have changed schools and went to another school but i wouldn't have had the opportunity they received the sophomore year that's correct and um you know just little things like that when you think back you know what choice you make now will affect you tomorrow absolutely right and that's what i've always said too is what you do today will affect you tomorrow. Yes. You know, it, whatever it may be, there, there is going to be a repercussion somewhere down the road, you know. Exactly. It's like, it's, it's think, like, it's like a wave, you know, you, you mm-hmm. throw something in the water and you see the ripple. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the great thing about that too is um, you can, sometimes you're not going to always make the, same, the, the correct choice. But because there's another fork in the road, you can make a better choice in the future. You can learn from your past mistakes yes. and make better choices in the future so that it can all turn around in in an instant. And when it does turn around and you're ready for it, uh, just amazing things can happen. That's right. Now, you know, with, with your book being out there now, do you, do you get a lot of emails or a lot of like, comments about your book of saying you know i read your book thank you so much for for you know i have um and i'm constantly amazed like i've received uh responses back from uh past teammates that i've had who've read the book um i've received uh comments from friends of friends that have read the book now and a lot of those people uh, have just been so um, so nice talking about how it's affected them and how how they've gone through similar things and how they have people in their f- circle of friends or family mm-hmm. that have gone through some of these problems and they're looking for a way out and they've shared the book with them and it's helped them a little bit you know try to find their way so that's you know that's the blessing that you know, I've received hearing about these from other people, and I'm just so excited that people are are able to see a way out of the darkness and being able to find their way to the, you know, to the joy and to the light again. That's right. You know, you know, looking back, like before you became an author, you know, yes. and, and then becoming an author of, of people that you just, you know, you, you just meet or you say hi to. You know, anyone and everyone that we come in contact with, we have some type of, you know, direction to either steer them in the right direction or steer them in the wrong direction. 
you know exactly and, and for example too i mean i've talked to so many people where just for the conversation you have and it's a joyful conversation because you don't know what they've been thinking about if you may be committing suicide exactly you know, you know just the little things that we touch people mm. you know and it changes our whole direction in which you could to save their life oh exactly and that's what a couple of my friends have talked about you know it it just means so much to just to even sometimes just say hi to somebody even a stranger that's right you know just making making that effort to them uh you know give them a compliment or try to stay positive look for something positive to say to somebody that's right and that one thing could be the turning point for their life. Absolutely. You know, it's like I said uh, to my to my friends that, you know, it may be that it's you do something overtly spectacular and you get, you know, really famous for it. But it also might be that one small thing that you affect somebody else and then they turn around and maybe they do something great. You know, maybe they're the person that's yeah. going to cure cancer or something. But with you giving them that spark of light and staying positive and upbeat, it turns their life around. And all of a sudden they do something overtly great as well. So, Absolutely. you know, everybody has a purpose and everybody can do something that's just right. by staying positive. And I think the biggest thing too, and I, and I've, I caught myself too. Let's say, you know, I'm having a bad day. That person mm -hmm. that's just seeing me for that moment saying, oh man, look at him. You know, but that's where you need to put yourself in check and say, am I, why am I really that upset for this? Exactly. You know, yeah. so you need to say, okay, turn yourself around and then, and then provide that positive energy, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then it, it's, it's, it's just a domino effect, no matter if, yeah. you know, you're in a bad mood, you're in a good mood. People see that or they feel that, and, it, mm -hmm. and then they react. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's so many things that, you know, one person can change so many. Exactly. And that's, that's the whole, you know, basis behind this book is that, yeah. you know, you can affect anybody. You know, your purpose in life might not be to do something you know, where you're going to get your 15 minutes of fame on TV, but to affect someone else's life, mm -hmm. to be able to give them hope for something in the future or lift them out of a, a depression, that that's what, you know, success is really all about. That's I mean, right. you have a successful life if you've affected just one person, but Absolutely. once you've affect, affected one person, you're going to get that feeling and you're going to want to go again, find another person and help another person before too long. Everybody's helping each other out and right. this it, world becomes a better place. Absolutely. Right. You know, just affecting that one person, then they spread it and then, then they spread it. And it's, it's exactly. Yeah. That's, that's uh, the power of, yep. you know, healing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Now, Mike, are you a self-publisher or do you have a publisher? Yes, I was self-published. I um, looked into all sorts of sorts of things, uh, you know, regular publishing companies and the the hybrid publishers and mm -hmm. things like that. And I just de determined that, you know, I've got enough enough intelligence and enough uh I guess guts to to go the self-published route. It's it's a little bit tougher than going yeah. some of those other routes, but uh, ultimately it was probably the best thing that I could have done. Yeah, because I I know you know for myself as a self-publisher, and that's what I do. I'm I'm in the advertising and graphic design and stuff, so it it's easier for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I find it more rewarding too. Um, yes. You know, it, and because uh, I, I do it all myself, you know, and I do have a, a team of, of people in that. But but I, I find it more gratifying that I'm doing it and I have the control over it. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, too, whatever I sell, a sell is mine. That's a big, important part, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there's pros and cons on self-publishing and, and having a publisher, but. 
I, 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 from like day one, I, I wanted to do my mm-hmm. own, you know. And yeah. bottom line is getting the story out and That's right. self-publishing is probably the easiest way to get the story out. That's right. You know, and, and I think too is, uh, well, like you said, you have like the hybrid ones and, and then you have uh, the publishers, but a lot of it as a, as an author, it's really still comes down to you. You know, it's, you know, just having a, a self or having a publisher, that doesn't mean they're going to do it all for you. And Correct. If, and if they do, well, there's going to be a price. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that's a big thing to think about, especially if you're on a budget. Exactly. Yep. And that's, that's kind of how I started out as well. It was, you know, kind of on a budget. How do I get this out as, as quickly and efficiently as possible, but yes. at the same time, you know, not go broke in the yeah, process. Right. <laughs> right. Now, now, uh, now you have, are you satisfied with your, uh, your book, uh, printer? Uh, the, yes, the people that uh, printed my book up, absolutely. They've done a, a fantastic job. And the amazing thing was I currently live in Columbia, South Carolina and the people that I got to print it were actually in Tecumseh, Michigan, okay. which is probably 15 miles from Adrian, which is where I basically the story yep. <laughs> took place. <laughs> so I had to go all the way there and found a, found a great uh, printer to take care of all my books for me. Now, can you print on demand as well there? Uh, no, not at the place that I had the, the mass amounts printed. Uh, I did go through like uh, Lulu press oh, for yes. um, uh, print on demand and then also through um, Amazon. Okay, sure. Now with your book now, Mike, uh, what kind of marketing techniques do you do? You do? Um, it's mostly been going to shows, Okay. Uh, going to book shows and doing autograph signings. Um, but I've also started setting up uh i've set up my website nice uh, uh, barefootkicker.com and uh since uh started putting up uh social media posts on facebook nice instagram and um also set up a youtube channel so i started helping uh uh, some videos about the book as well so that's all tied in together excellent i mean that those kind of things I think can speak volumes, you know, it, you know, just having your book out there, people can catch that, you know? And, yes. And I, and I think that's, I think that is one of the biggest things that authors face is, you know, especially the marketing part of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I think you're, you're, you're going in the right direction of just, mm-hmm. you know, just feeding the channels, you know, I mean, you just, that's yeah. a good, great way of doing it. Um, yeah. n- now when is it your, a lot of bookmarks as well. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, now you just brought that up yeah. now. So when you go to like book signing events, what kind of uh, swag do you bring with you? Basically it's just the bookmarks. Yeah. That's okay. all I have to, to pass out to give to people and have, kind of a description on the back what the book's about Uh, i've got actually two books now uh followed it up with a kind of a companion book is a a daily devotional book oh nice excellent and um it's called embracing gratitude so everybody kept asking me well how do you find one good thing every day and it just kind of hit me well let me let me kind of walk you through it and developed a you know a single page devotional uh, for 365 days a year. So that people can kind of use that to find their one good thing. And then hopefully that'll spark them to keep finding good things. Well, you think about, you know, if they have a hard time finding one good thing, well, if you're waking up that morning, you'll find it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe it's a sun sunset or sunrise. That's right. Maybe it's a morning cup of coffee or something. That's right. It, it, the main thing is you're here on earth to share it, you know? Exactly. Yep. Um, now, and what is your website again, please, Mike? It's, uh, it's barefootkicker.com. Okay. And that is up and running. Yes. Okay. Yep. F- fantastic. Um, 
Now, will I see you in November? I'm still trying to figure out uh, what's going on. I've, I've got a really busy September coming up okay. and at a couple of um, other family things I have to do. Sure, so sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to yeah. be able to move down or not, but uh, yeah. I hope if not this year, definitely next year. Yeah, I know it's, it's the, uh, it's usually like the first week or I'm sorry, the week before Thanksgiving usually. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but okay, Mike, you ready for the lightning round? I will do my best. Absolutely. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. And they're, they're easy. You, you'll be fine. Um, now, okay. So who is your favorite book author? Oh, wow. Um, I've got a couple of different, I, when I was growing up, it was probably Stephen King, mm -hmm. those supernatural things. And then um, as I was, you know, going through business, I read a lot of business books by like Eli Goldratt yeah. and, um, you know, Robert Kiyosaki. And um, those are probably the, the main ones that I had been reading. Okay. Uh, now, who is your favorite movie director? Oh, goodness. Um, probably thinking George Lucas okay. at the time. Sure. Uh, it's, it's instrumental time when I was growing up. Uh, really got into the, the Star Wars. and Who, who hasn't, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. now, now, name three sports you like to watch during the Olympics. Ooh, during the Olympics, um, probably basketball, um, volleyball, and um, track and field. There you go. And this is the last weekend, too. Yes. Now, doing doing good. So we just got to right. keep, keep, keep going. going. Now, now do, you, do you have a favorite sport you like to participate in? Uh, used to be football <laughs> and uh, I liked uh, I kind of got everything started off playing soccer. So those soccer. are probably my two favorite. Excellent. Uh, what yeah. type of music do you enjoy listening to? Uh, a lot of uh, kind of inspirational, kind of the uh, harder, you know, rock type music, but okay. uh, yeah. things that have a positive uplifting meaning to them. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now, now, what state are you originally from? Uh, originally, I'm not from a state. I was actually from Washington D.C. Washington. Ah. So uh, I was born in D.C., lived in Maryland, and uh, moved right. to Michigan. So yeah, that's right. You're your dad. Yes. I got it. Okay. Now, do you mainly write with a pen or a pencil, and why? Uh, mostly with a pen. Uh, only because when I would write with pencil, things would get smeared oh. and then I'd have to go back and try to figure out what oh. I wrote. And if I use the pen, I'm, I'm pretty good. And then I transfer it to a computer. And hey, you're awesome. Well, Mike, I, I thank you so very much for being on the author's table today. And it was definitely a joy to have you on. Yeah, I appreciate the time, and I appreciate you having me. It was uh, it was good for me too. I appreciate you. Well, of course, and I and I wish you the very best, and I and I hope to see you in November. Uh, but please keep me in the loop. You know of of any new upcoming books, or you know if you definitely have any, have any questions or whatever, please reach out and uh, and. Uh, but I wish you the very best in your journey. I appreciate it, and you as well. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome, and you have a fantastic day. Thanks. You too. And always be positive. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Mike. Find one good thing every day. That's right. There you go. Have a fantastic day, Mike. Thanks. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.